Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're continuing on with The Outer Worlds, and uh, so we are actually going to go say hi to Phineas, I think, uh, before we do anything else, but I actually just realised something, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, if you go to skills here, you know, you see your skills and all the modified ones, if you hover over it, you can see down here um, that you get, you know, what the modifiers are, and I think we actually get all of the modifiers of all of our, like, characters, you know, all of our companions. I think they all apply here, so... That's kind of cool. I mean, not a lot we can do in our ship, though, right? I mean, it's just our ship. There's there's not a lot of quests or anything to do, but engineering has more than doubled. So that means we can actually tinker here, which is really cool, because I like to think it's not us tinkering, it's it's our characters doing it, you know? It's, it's our companions doing this for us, which I think is really cool, because that makes sense, you know? That's how it should be. So you can see here, uh, level 16, level 13, level 12, level 10... Uh, wow, really, level 10 and DPS that high. Awesome. All right, sweet. So you can see with tinkering, what happens is you spend a few bits. All right, so here you go. We're going to spend 69 bits. <laughs> and the damage will go up. So that's just the base damage, not the DPS. So uh, that's per shot. So there we go. And it goes up a level. So you can see it's level 11. So let's put it up again. Level 12. Level 13. Yeah, we just keep going, which is awesome. Cost is quite a bit, but now we've got level 16 thing and the DPS has yeah, gone to 640. So that's tinkering, guys. That's tinkering. Pretty cool, isn't it? It's a pretty nice, uh, nice ability. I am going to spend some on this as well, actually. Let's do that. Um, I don't entirely know how the cost goes up. It seems to go up very quickly. Um, but, like, that costs way more than this one, because I think every time you tinker, it's more expensive. Um, like, per time you have tinkered, not per level necessarily. I think there's some relationship there between sort of the starting level of the item, like when you picked it up and the expense. I think. I think from my observations, but I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure. So uh, yeah, so we got a load of stuff leveled up now, which is cool. Uh, in fact, we could, yeah, we could actually put up a bunch of this stuff too. Help our, yeah, help our uh, team out a bit. Because yeah, some of this stuff is pretty low level. So let's level this up a bit. Let's get everything to at least should we say 14? Because we've got quite a bit of cash. Oh wow, that's real low. Let's get that up. Everything to 14. Awesome. Just just help everyone out a bit, you know? There we go. Oh, another thing. Um, you can see from the borders what's equipped and what isn't. So, yeah. Pretty handy. Uh, that was already at 16. That's a 12. We can tinker with that a bit. There we go. And wow, this has got a long way to go. Probably just equip that instead, huh? Yeah, I'll probably just equip that on whoever has it. Who has this equipped? I have no idea. Uh. Hmm. I don't know. I'll just put another couple levels in it. Whatever. Uh, that can go put a couple levels. Okay, maybe let's go 12. There we go. That'll do. That'll do. I've done. I'm done faffing about. I already repaired everything. We can break things down. We can modify. I would like to do some modifications. That's already been modified. Uh, this hasn't yet, though. I would like to do the plasma carbine. So let's see what we can put on it. Extra magazine size does sound very useful, I must say. Uh, we can give it shock damage, which would be nice. Or uh, plasma damage, which sounds familiar. Whoops. I just wanted to preview it, actually. Because it already does plasma damage, because it's the plasma carbine. I don't think mag 2 power does anything. Um, okay, cool. Good stuff. <laughs> Alright, let's give it, uh, yeah, extra magazine size instead. So we did lose a mag there, which is a bit awkward. Range spread goes down. We can give it a, we can give it a scope, which would be nice. Two times scope, gives it extra range. That one, the super scope, 2,000. Uh, yeah, I think just the spread is really nice. Lower that. There we go. Cool. And let's see if we can't change, like, the vortex mace here. Uh, extra attack speed. That sounds wonderful. Let's do that. And for the blade, power attack damage up. Give it plasma damage. Um, or give it shock damage. Uh, so what does this do right now? It's just a standard vortex mace, isn't it? Alright. So let's give it, um... Let's give it plasma damage, because that will put the damage up a bit, and put the DPS up a bit. So that'll do. Cool. 
Oh yeah, so someone mentioned in my uh, Discord server, actually. Uh, plasma damage does more against beasts, uh, apparently. So, that's interesting to know. Um, I guess... Corrosive does more against people, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, they all seem to have, you know, pros and cons. Um, right, let's go to Phineas' lab and say hello to him. Because apparently he's got some science weapon as well. We have successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain. And we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself? Or would you like to do the honors? I like that. Because she has explained that it's, uh, it's difficult to get there. So who are we going to take with this? I think a killer robot. And, uh, I don't know, Ellie's pretty down to earth. I think she's not going to take any nonsense from him. And if we take Vic here, Max, he's probably going to be like, Did you know that the corporation's actually really good? And we'll be like, dude, not now, okay? Stop it with your capitalist religion, okay? It's not... It's, yeah. Yeah, Phineas isn't... He's not going to buy that. It's just not his thing. <clears throat> Hello? Can you hear me? Does this work? It does. Oh, damn it, blast that's loud. Hmm. That's really cool. Little skylights. Uh, so yeah, this just this looks a lot I'm like uh, my ongoing experiments and securing myself. Good. Um, yeah, this kind of looks like Groundbreaker. You know the landing areas. That ship looks like it's um lost it a bit. Is that Phineas's ship that we saw in the starting cutscene? Could be. It does look familiar. I think that's yeah, I think that's his normal ship. That's cool. Mind the mess. Sir. I haven't had a visitor since, uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor. Uh, alright. Cool. We found his lab. It's full of bison. Sisty pigs. They're sisty pigs. Okay. And, haha, <laughs> okay. Well, that was easy. Aha! Uh -huh. I see you found my portable molecular compression device. Better known as a shrink ray. Find the Bubbles. Point. Target will shrink down into a manageable size, whereupon you may commence beating them to a pulp. <laughs> well, alright then. Be free to try it on a marauder sometime. Huh. Will do. Oh, thank the law. Your skin hasn't spontaneously changed color. Potential <laughs> side effect of the revival process. Very rare, but uh, you never know. Hmm. Right. Welcome to my little uh, habitation, such as it is. I've got uh, caffeinoids. Sisty bits, if you're into that sort of thing. So, welcome. Make yourself at home. My secret hideout is your secret hideout. Well, all right then. Um, let's see. Um, monitoring device. Uh. Oh yeah, because he was he was monitoring us, wasn't he? He was monitoring us at the start, and then he couldn't. But then we said hi over the phone, so, like, whatever. But anyway, I'll, I'll see if that's the thing. Any chance you could repair that monitoring device? The one I gave you before your pod landed? Ruined beyond repair. Impossible to find replacement parts. That's Halcyon manufacturing for you. Hmm. Don't worry about it. I'm reasonably certain you're not going to spontaneously expire. No need to monitor your recovery. All right, then. Uh... That reminds me. I appreciate you pulling me out of the hope. Not at all, my intrepid accomplice. I should thank you for tolerating my somewhat brusque manner. I only regret that I couldn't save more of your fellow settlers, what with being hunted by the board and emptying my supply of necessary chemicals. Um, I wanted to talk to you about something else. Of course. Don't know what. What's on your mind? I, very little. Very little. Uh, there's some reason you're hiding behind bulletproof glass. Oh, it's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless, it's quite comfortable in here, you know. I have my beans, have my caffeinoids, plenty of toilet paper. <laughs> Alright then. Got a moment to talk. Absolutely. Uh, so, I don't know. <laughs> He's always behind bulletproof proof glass. I think that could just be, you know, a fun quirk about Phineas. While also 
having the um, story implications of making him invincible until later in the uh, in the game. You know, if you do choose to uh, sort of give him into the board or whatever, we have had the option to tell the board where he is. So I'm assuming that's just so the story can progress because he's sort of invincible to a point, right? Because he's behind uh, behind the bulletproof proof glass. I assume that's the case, but. You know, right now though, given the fact that we don't want to kill him or do anything bad to him, it just seems a bit odd that he doesn't trust us. But I guess he did just dig us out of a freezer and we do have brain damage, so I don't know. Um, have you met my crew yet? No, and I've been trying very hard to avoid making eye contact. So you're the captain's mysterious associate. I'm Ellie. Nice to meet you. Wait, not another word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know who you are. Let's just enjoy our possible deniability while it lasts, shall we? <laughs> yeah, Why fair enough, I guess. just invite the entire colony to my secret, carefully concealed laboratory? It isn't as if I wanted privacy. Dumb answer for this. Gotta be. Oh, no, there's not. Oh. Okay. Show a little hospitality, Phineas. Oh, very well. I can be a little cantankerous when I haven't had my caffeinoids. <laughs> you have my apologies and so forth. Aww. For what it's worth, I am pleased that you found a crew such as they are. <laughs> such as they are. You may be extraordinarily dim-witted, but <laughs> you've got heart. I'm sure your crew sees that as well as I do. I love that. <laughs> I love that he acknowledges that. Um. Uh. You're right. I'm doing pretty well for myself. Yes, indeed. Well done. Also, you still haven't spontaneously liquefied. That is, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. All right, I guess uh, I'll talk to you later. Of course, I'll be here as usual. All right. Uh, I mean, we've got a shrink ray. That's cool. There's a there's a pig named Bubbles. Hey, Bubbles. Uh, not that chatty, apparently. Ooh, sissy pig hoof. Lovely. And ooh, a poster. Oh, that's cool. It's of a terror ray. Interesting. And, um, oh, it's time to examine. Reminder, obscure body in the SK system. What's the SK system? And what needs securing? Duncan. What's Duncan? Duncan? Search for clues. What? Uh, Hawthorne's Tony mentioned searching Black Mike Vendor's Groundbreaker and Fulbrook. Apparently we had success in finding, uh... Finding rare items using such sources. Purchasing old logs and data archives from these vendors. Okay, so I guess Duncan's not a vendor, I guess. That's pointing me to. That's interesting. Cool. Alright, uh, so this is my escape pod, I'm guessing. Uh, you spent over four decades in space with nothing but the technology of this little chamber keeping you alive. The rest of your fellow colonists are still trapped in similar chambers waiting for you to restore them. Uh, raising core temperature another 5 uh, centigrade over 1 hour. Dosage appears to be working. Slight diffs from process to cysti <laughs> in cysty pigs, not beyond expected boundaries. So he was practicing um, uh, thawing cysty pigs, which is interesting. Which um, are gross pigs covered in cysts. Lovely. Anyway, uh, microscopic assessment shows no sign of sudden traumatic mass. Cell wall collapse. Encouraging. Reminder, we still need to mop up pig. Oh, God. I uh, need to get a view into the cranium, see what's going on with neurons. Oops, hand slipped. <laughs> Likely effects? Ah, uh, nothing important. May have numbness in left heel. Who even needs that? Looking at sample, evidence of uh, hyperactive production of dopamine and uh, norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. I'm going to say norepinephrine. Curious, no evidence of uh, entropic effects on neurons, however. Very excited. Now, if only I can keep them from exploding. Oh dear. Uh, raising core temperature, another 5C. One hour. Oops, I forgot I had, to, uh, had probe in brain. Jostled with elbow. Oh my god. Subject may suffer numbness in right earlobe. Acceptable. Alright, so, so far, he's, um... Yeah, he's just been prodding and, yeah, so hand slipped, hit me in the brain. Um, knocked a probe with his elbow. Hurt my brain. 
Uh, I feel ridiculous telling, mostly, frozen slab of meat, you're doing fine, Jack Pacage. He's going to say Jack Package, though, isn't he? He doesn't know that we pronounce it Pacage. Because that's not how it's pronounced. Anyway, practicing bedside manner important. Age recovery. Curious about that neurochemical production. Side effect of prolonged hibernation. Subject may experience uh, tachyfe uh, tachyfechia. Tachyfechia? Tachyfechia. Uh, exaggerated f uh, fight or flight response. Checked brainwave. Found sharp uptick in perceptive cognitive processing when I jostled the probe. Fascinating. Equivalent to speed of common fly's brain. Could be useful in stressful situations. Subjective time dilation. See world moving in slow motion. Would everyone from Hope have this sort of brain damage, or is it peculiar to uh, Jack Package? Can't wait to work in more from Hope. Study in detail. Is it even right to call this effect brain damage? Seems like enhancement to me. Who would want... <laughs> who wouldn't want on-call hyperfast cognitive response? Am I envious? To expand the span of breadth to an eternity? To be able, just for a moment, to perceive the world in all its infinite... <clears throat> Excuse me. All its infinite detail? Core temp up. Still stable. No sign of of cell wall decay and neurological necrosis beginning next 5c over one hour cycle yes i believe i do envy you jack Pagage. that's right he's using a real name now okay so oh well uh reminder mop up melted pig and also also a cane in there as well interesting yeah i'm just nicking all this stuff oh pocket watch lovely Okay, yeah, so what's this then? Messages. Uh, hack 35. We have hack of 35? Uh, oh yeah, well of course we do. It's in stealth. I think it was in science. It says bypass that. <laughs> so, to H. Blythe. Uh, okay. Uh, I worked it out. Explain details later. Will be difficult to reproduce. Need your help. All necessary materials should be present in Halcyon, but locations elude me. Dumped a new associate dirt side on Terra 2, near Edgewater. Yay, with your dirt side associate. Um, that would be a good name. That would have been a good name for us. They have a stake in my purpose, but trust in them only about 23.7 at present. Okay, that explains the bulletproof glass. They're recovering a ship. Should be along any time. Just need to know where to send them. Let me know when you get this. Eager to, uh, eager to be done. And, oh, that's it. Just the one message. And, uh, yeah, it says no responses. Like four times there, which... Yep. Yep. And, uh, haven't looked at this one either. Experimental notes. I like this. It's fun. Uh, flash frozen organic material reverts back to its original cell structure when treated with tincture of, uh, demethyl sulfoxide. Rate of explosive cell death a very respectable 6%. Wow, that's, um, doesn't sound great. Bad news. Difficult to acquire. Limited quantities of compound likely produced by Auntie Cleo. Recent disc uh, recently discontinued due to severe adverse reactions. Must find more. Um, artificial stasis successful induced in cystic pig specimen. Two hours later, revivification complicated. Cystic pig tissue returned to living state. Brain tissue suffered from rapid nucleation. Attempting treatment. Three well, almost four hours later, uh, treatment progressing. Another three hours. Well, two and a half. Uh, treatment failed. Brain tissue irre irreparably. Damaged by rapid onset necrosis. Uh, half an hour later, explosive cell death. Hour later, finished cleaning liquefied remains of cystic pig from laboratory floor, walls, equipment. Uh, okay. Two o'clock, fresh out of Auntie Cleo's. Um, experimenting with Space's Choice, partially emulsified creamer substitute. Uh, two minutes later, finished brewing, added two ounces Space's Choice. Two minutes later, atrocious. Felt part of self die on the inside reminder add spaces choice to the list note to self too buy more mouthwash <laughs> this is just about coffee not an experiment at all um sorry uh caffeinoids sister pig notes have spared one of my stock of experimental sissy pigs uh to be used as a renewable source of nourishment have named this lucky pig bubbles Giving an animal a name establishes rapport and creates a positive emotional bond. Allegedly improves flavor of tumors. Must look into that. <laughs> God. Uh, excellent creatures, sissy pigs. Don't know how people you survive without these genetic wonders of porcine succulents. Slaughtering a pig for meat instead of harvesting tumors that ripen naturally, falling off the flesh like mock apples off a tree, seems the height of barbarity. Truly a miracle of modern science. Yeah, I mean, actually, that does sound great. You know, the animal gets to live, we get bacon. Um, can't go wrong there, really. Oh, we can hack this too. Personal log entry. 
uh, getting experience with this too, which I love, uh, have procured the services of one Captain Alex Hawthorne of the Unreliable. I hope he didn't name his ship after the quality of his services. I'll be sending my new accomplice down to Hawthorne via escape pod as soon as the revival process is complete. Hawthorne should make for an agreeable companion. <laughs> um, hmm. Or at least an acceptable chaperone. Law willing, he isn't a total buffoon. Uh, yeah, he turned out to be a buffoon. Sorry, Phineas. Alright, well, I think, um... I think we're done, maybe? Where did he get a... He's got a... He's got a... Raptor pod or whatever the hell they're called. What are they called again? We put a lot of them to sleep. Should know what they are. Oh, and these escape pods. Yeah, remember being in there? So that's... This is where we were. This is where we were. We were looking out this window. When he, uh... When he sent us to Monarch. Was it Monarch? No, Terra 2. Monarch's place we're going. Fullbrook. Cool. Alright. Brilliant. So we met Phineas, we've eavesdropped, we found out that he only trusts us, like less than 30%, maybe a little bit higher now, you know, we have done a lot for him already, but um, but then we did waltz in there with um, a robot and, a, and some strange woman he doesn't know, but oh well. It's not all bad, is it? It's not all bad. Right. Morning. Intruders will be, oh, it's you. Yeah, hey. Okay, so where's Duncan? Duncan's on Monarch. Somewhere. So Cascadia landing pad, that's uh, the place we could land. Um, but it was it was recommended we get the nav key so we can go to Stella Bay. Um, so, yeah. Stella Bay it is, I guess. Or... Yeah, I think we, yeah. Yeah, we've got nothing else to do. We're good. Stella Bay landing pad. We are now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills. Pleased to hear it. Check this out. Uh, so yeah, there is a blockade, though I don't see it. It would be cool if we could see it, but we can't. Oh well. I mean, we're past it, right? It'll be out the back window, which we don't have. Okay, so, uh... Vicar Max has a mission here, I believe. Um... Somewhere on this planet, anyway. Uh, let's, hmm, do I want to take Ellie or Pavati? Maybe Felix? Let's take Felix and Vicar Max. I want to see these two interact a bit. I think that'd be interesting. Monarch. Hooray. New place. New planet, guys. New planet. And, uh, damn, that is cool. See, what I love about this, the kind of skies in this game is that it just adds so much to the atmosphere. Because, like, you know, seeing these planets and things, just as we're roaming around, like, it just, it makes everything look a bit different. I mean, look at this. Look, that's all planet. But it just makes the skies look crazy. It's just such a cool backdrop. It's wonderful. It just, it just makes it feel a bit unique. So what's this, then? Uh, oh, just normal thing. It's the same with every landing pad, isn't it? Let's have a quick look around. Aha! Booty. Found eight bullets. Well worth the search. Cool. So, uh, yeah, this was cool. This is a cool looking place. Um. I think down here, the little. What would you call those? These little, little porches, maybe? Uh. Oh, here we go. Yes, yeah, so these are the porches. I saw very, um. Space Wild West. You know? Hey, hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Seems very friendly to say his, his name is Grim and he has an eye patch. Hey, buddy. I don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? Um, yeah? Um, you seem surprised. You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. Um, what are they doing out there? You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off road traffic. Us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing. So, here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest Sal Tuna and Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Okay, so Monarch Stellar Industries, does that mean that they named the planet or they're named after the planet? That's what I want to know. 
Um. Okay, so, uh, Captain Jack Prakash. Swell. There's one for the logs. I'm even gonna give you your own entry code. Hmm. I'm and they like that, apparently. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. Ooh. Um. Let's see. Uh, is Stella Bay really that isolated? We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, can you imagine? Uh, you're not what I expected to find on Monarch. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls. Mostly. Oh. Well, Alright then. Raptodons and cannibals? I can't wait. That's why we brought Felix. <laughs> Alright, so. You say the board's been lying about this place? Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Wow. Uh, the nostalgic stench of home. Can't say I miss the day to day of living in Edgewater. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Um, cool. Um, I can have a look around. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, <laughs> and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? Oh, I mean, yeah, sure. Sure. That depends. What is it? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Toswell poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Um, yeah. I mean... Why not? Yeah. Sure. I could ask about your poster. Thanks a bunch. Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. Hmm. Alright then. All right. Got some vendors. Which we can already buy stuff from, which is cool. Let's see. We got sell armor. This one does. Uh, 26, 14. Okay, nothing, nothing crazy good. Okay. So, new planet. Freaking new planet, guys. The sun's coming out. Ah. Oh. This is really cool. I really like this one. Yacht Club, huh? Got a Yacht Club. Which is odd. This, uh... A yacht Club is something I expect from the coast. Are we on the coast? It seems... Unless it's flying yachts. I don't know. Are we going to introduce the spaceships called yachts? Uh, Sebastian Adams. Agnes Needham. Oh, you've got to talk to someone called Agnes. Oh, no. Sir, please, I need your help. I can pay. Yeah, sure. What's up? Oh, thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. They do do that. Um... So, I I don't think this game has children in it. Because they were very clear that you can kill everyone in the game in their marketing. You know, if you want to play like a crazy character, you can kill everybody. And um, as soon as you put children in games, that's a legal minefield, right? You just, you're never going to get your game published in half the world. So you just don't do it. So there's no children, right? Um, unless I'm, I'm you know, going to be very surprised. But I'm pretty sure that's the case. So um, I think this is probably... Probably a guy in his 20s or something. Um, so anyway. Your child is missing. Where'd you last see him? Oh, I just knew you were a good person. Agnes, I said, this is the man to save your little tucky. And I was right. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to be a grown man. Into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs, and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools, and poisonous plants. But he didn't listen. Because he's a grown man. Please, won't you go and find my boy? Yeah, I'll go find your little boy. Actually, it might not be a man. It could be, uh... It might actually be like a dog or something. It might be a tamed canid or something. Um, you never know. Uh, let's see. Uh... 
Why would Tucker run away? He's been pining for an adventure. Mm. Says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. Oh. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him. A raptodon would snap him up first chance of God. I just know one's ripped his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. Okay, he's got fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. Might be a primal. Might be a primal. That could be a thing. You know, one of those big beasties. Um, don't know. Don't know. I have no idea. Uh, I hope you find it. Where, actually, where would he have gone? He's been listening to those awful broadcasts that the Iconoclasts put out. I begged Sanjar to put a stop to them. But did he? No. And now I just know my boys run off to Amber Heights. That is, if a Manta Queen hasn't spooled out and eaten his entrails for breakfast already! <laughs> Dear God. Alright, um... Uh, where is Amber Heights? That old settlement, southwest of Stellar Bay. I don't know which is worse, the thought of my son shacking up with the nutty iconoclasts. Or that he never made it. Sprats could be nesting in his <laughs> rotting body alongside the road as we speak. <gasps> Or, or maybe Marauders got him, pulled all his teeth out, crushed him into their drugs, and made him snort them. <laughs> oh, the things that could happen to my sweet baby. Okay, this I'm finding so strange, because, um, I mean, obviously they're playing it for laughs here, right? It doesn't have to make sense. It's clearly just some daft side quest to introduce us to the Iconoclasts, right? That's almost certainly the case. So, whatever, fine. But I find it really funny because I think any mother who is genuinely worried wouldn't be able to say, like, all of those horrible situations their boy might be in. They just wouldn't be able to come out and say that. that if they were genuinely imagining those things happening, I don't think they could just sit here and keep reeling them off like this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is all very silly. I love it. Uh, I hope you find your son. Thank you. Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. Yep. Cool. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouth. <laughs> Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. He's definitely a grown man. He's a grown man. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. He's definitely a grown man. Um, right. So, uh, I think that'll do it for today, guys. But, um, I mean, damn, look. We're on a new planet. We've got places to go. We're going to have to go in there. The boss is in there. There's always a tower in the middle of the settlement. They've made that pretty clear. Which uh, I kind of like, because partly, it's like, yeah, these buildings are all going to be quite similar, because, well, everything's just... Just out of kits, really, aren't they? All of, uh, all the buildings we've been seeing. They're all out of space kits. They can just be, you know, landed on a planet and set up, I imagine. So, yeah, they're all quite similar. Also saves on development time for the game. And also, you can see it from anywhere in the settlement, so you can always find your way into the... You know, into the main, uh, sort of the headquarters of it. Always find your way there. Find your way around. Because, yeah, door right there. So you see that from anywhere. You can find the way out. It's just, yeah, it's just good town planning. So anyway, um, yeah. So we're going to go speak to the boss, I reckon. Um, I'm assuming Sanjar? Sanjar. I think Sanjar is what the guy said. So we're going to go talk to him. So yeah, cool. So guys, it's been good. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.